So section 3.6 is a word problem section and every problem in section 3.6 I do again in brief calculus. Um, we don't have the tools of calculus to do these problems but we can solve them with algebra. Um, they're a little bit easier with calculus but the reason I throw these in here is just to get you used to this style of problem so that when you, if you take a, a calculus course, that when you see these problems again, that you can make a good stab at them. So there's probably little chance that you could do number one with just me having it flashed up on the screen. So I'll flash it back after I do number two, which is kind of its brother problem. So in problem two, it talks about a campground owner having a thousand meters of fencing. It doesn't say square meters, so this is just linear meters. There's just different, just a bunch of lengths of fence that add up to a thousand meters. And he wants to enclose a rectangular field bordering a river. No fencing needing along the river. So basically, um, pictorially, this is what happens. That there's a river that has a reasonably straight edge. And next to that river, this campground owner is going to fence in three sides of a fence. Usually, I make the side that's parallel to the river. I call it the length. And I generally draw it longer, but there isn't anything that would have make, make it wrong to make these sides longer and this side shorter. But usually, I call the side parallel to the river, the length, and the other sides that are perpendicular to the river, the widths. And I'll use W for width and L for length. And so this campground owner is going to build a fence that's going to only have three sides, the fourth side we can't put a, a fence along the river. It says let W be the width of the river. Follow these steps to find the dimensions of the field that yields the largest area. Well. First thing I want to do is find an equation for the length of the field, which means I need to have an, a, a, an equal sign in a problem, and I need to solve that for length. This statement that says write an equation for the length of a field implies to create an equation that uses the information in the problem um, to create a problem with an equal sign that's solved for L. And to do that, I'm going to use the fact that the campground owner has a thousand meters of fencing and he's going to build two lengths, two widths and one length. So I'm going to create the equation that says one length being built plus two widths being built. Those three lengths of fence or those three sides of fence that I'm going to build or the campground owner is going to build needs to add up to all a thousand meters of fencing. So that would be the equation that's kind of modeled by this diagram. We're building three sides of fence with a thousand meters and the way that problem A is written it implies that it wants this to be solved for L. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this for L. And my answer to part A of number two is going to be the length equals minus 2w plus 1,000. Done with part A doesn't um, get me to the answer yet, but each step is going to be worth points on the test, so we need to do each step. The next thing I want to do is write an equation for the area of the field that's being enclosed, and the field that's being enclosed, even though I'm only building three sides, is a rectangle. And to find an equation for the area of a rectangle, I just multiply the length times the width because the area formula for a rectangle is length times width. So for the area of the field that's being enclosed, I'm going to say the area of this field, it's a rectangular region, can be found by multiplying the length times the width. If I left this equation like this, this is an equation for the area of the field. It's not a very useful equation. What I'm going to need to do to make this equation more useful is I'm going to substitute into the equation and replace the L with minus 2w plus 1,000. So I'm going to get area equals minus 2w 
plus 1,000 times W. And then I'm going to clear this parentheses. And I clear this parentheses by first going minus 2W times W. And that will give me a minus 2W squared. And then I'll go 1,000 times W. And that will give me plus 1,000 W. All three of these are correct answers for part B. This is probably the best answer for part B. It's an equation for the area, the A means area. Each one of these is an equation that represents the area of this field. This one's going to be the most useful. Now into the algebra part of this. So what I'm supposed to do is find the value of the width that gives the, the maximum area. So I'm, I don't have a lot of restrictions. The restrictions I have is I have 1,000 meters of fencing. I'm building two widths. I guess the most a width could be is 500 meters. If I'm building two of those, that uses up all the fence, wouldn't leave me with any length. So I need to find the value of the width that leads to the maximum area. And there are lots of ways to go about doing this. Um, probably the easiest way is to use a formula, and um, that might seem kind of mysterious. The, the not easiest way to do this is to sketch a graph of the function, and I'll do that first, and then I'll show you how to do it by the formula approach. So one way to get the optimal width, to get the width that I can make that encloses the maximum area, I can graph this area function, and when I graph this function, the x-axis is going to be the widths, and the y-axis is going to be the area that corresponds to this width. And when I graph this, it's going to, the graph's going to look something like this once I get a good window. And every point on this graph, its x-coordinate is a width and its y-coordinate is the corresponding area. And let me go through and sketch a graph. Probably going to have to play quite a bit to get my window okay. I immediately, um, before I jump into the graph, I know that the standard window of negative 10 to 10 on the axis isn't going to be good because I have a thousand meters of fencing to build these fences with. And as I kind of mentioned, the most the width can be is 500 meters because if you're building two 500 meters um, widths, then that uses up all thousand meters without using any, without having any lengths built. So I'm going to say, for my window, my x min is going to be zero. My x min, min is the minimum width I could build. I can't build a width less than zero. And because I'm doing two widths, my x max can't be less than five, more than 500. For the y's, the y's are the areas. The x's are the widths. The y's are the areas. The minimum area that I could have is zero. And it's the y max that I don't have a good feel for. And, um, I don't know. I see numbers in the thousands. I don't have a real good feel for what this y max should be. So what I'm going to do is um, make it a big number. And I don't think even 10,000 is big enough. But once I get a graph, if I can't see the top of the parabola, I'm going to continue to change this y max until I can see the top of the parabola. So I'm just starting with an obnoxiously large number. And I'll take a look at the graph. If I can see the whole parabola, that window is going to be fine. If I can't see the whole parabola, then I have to continue to make this y max bigger. And I just pulled that number out of the head. I just compared it to 1,000 and added a zero just to make it kind of big. So on my calculator, I'm going to graph this area function, which is negative 2w squared. Of course, I can't use w. I'll use x plus 1,000x. And then for my window, my x's, I'm going to go from 0 to 500 because the widths can't, can't be less than 0 or more than 500. And for the y's, which are my area, I'm going to go 0 to 10,000. And the 0, I knew my area can't be less than 0. The y max, I really don't know. I just pulled that number out of the air. I just pulled a big number. And now I'm going to look at the graph as it comes up. And I don't see any, any, anything in this window. 
actually see a little bit of the parabola here and a little bit of the parabola there. It goes way off my screen. If I want to get an idea of what kind of y might max might make sense, I can look at my table by going second in table and then arrowing over to the y's. As I look at the y's, I'm already at 15,000. Now I'm at 36,800. Real specifically, this point right here, the point 40, 36,800, it would say if the width is 40 meters, the area is 36,800 meters. Every point on this parabola, the x coordinate is the width, the y coordinate is the corresponding area. I'm trying to find the width that gives the largest area. And as I'm arrowing through this table, my numbers are getting really, really big. And I'm getting tired of arrowing through this table. So I'm going to stop. I'm already at 65,000. Let me change my Y max to 100,000 and see if that produces a graph that's decent enough. The further I go through this table, the bigger my Ys are getting. I'm gambling that my Ys don't get over 100,000, but they could. But let me go ahead and change that Y max to 100,000. And now I'm going to start to see a little bit better graph. Actually, a lot better graph. So I almost see the whole parabola. Clearly, going up to 100,000 wasn't enough. But now, I know I'm not that far away from it. Let me just bump this up again. I'm just guessing here. and in, in a minute, I'll show you how to do this without graphing with algebra so you don't have to play with a window. I'm going to bump my Y max up to 150,000. And now I can see the whole parabola. It turns out that the solution that I'm looking for is at the vertex because the vertex has the maximum Y value for this particular parabola. And the Y values are the area. So the vertex is going to have the the y value of the vertex is a maximum area. The x value of the vertex is the value of w, or the width that leads to the maximum area. So if I could just find this vertex, it's going to give me the value of the width that leads to the maximum area, and it will also give me the maximum area. So on my calculator to find this vertex, I do second, and then hit the trace key. Go down to option four. This vertex is a maximum point. I hit enter and then I trace to the left of the vertex, just kind of arbitrarily to the left of the vertex while my calculator says left bound. I'm using the left arrow to do that. Then I hit enter. When I hit enter, the word left bound is going to change to right bound. And now I'm going to tra trace to the right of the vertex using the right arrow. So when the curse, when the, when the Calculator says right bound. I need to get my cursor somewhere to the right of the vertex. It could be way down here or way up here. As long as it's to the right of the vertex, it's fine. I'm going to hit enter again. The word right bound is going to change to guess. And when it says guess, I get as close to the vertex as I can and hit enter. And this tells me, if I round this, that the optimal width is 250 meters and the area that's going to be enclosed is 125,000 meters. So the vertex of this particular parabola is 250 comma, and I can't squeeze it in here, 125,000. In terms of this problem, this is going to be the value of W that gives the maximum area. So the answer to part C, the optimal width is 250 and then the units in this problem are meters so I'm going to write meters. So that's one way to get the um, answer to part C and it's a lot, it's way more work than I care to do. The easier way to get the answer to part B is to use the vertex formula. So to find the optimal width I'm going to use the vertex formula, and I won't have to graph. The vertex formula is a formula negative b over 2a. 
that gives me the x coordinate of the vertex, in this case the value of w that gives the maximum area. And the parabola that I graphed is that a equals negative 2w squared plus 1000w. The a for this formula is the number in front of the square term, which is going to be negative 2. The b from this formula is the number in front of the first power term, which is 1000. So form in terms of a formula, I can say this is negative b, put the negative sign from the formula, and then 1000 for b over 2a, which is 2 times negative 2. That's going to give me negative 1000 over negative 4. And that's going to give me the 250 that I got graphically. So the more efficient way to answer part C, because the optimal, the maximum area occurs at the vertex of this parabola when the width is whatever the x-coordinate of the vertex of this parabola is, the best way to get it, the answer to part C is to use this formula. So I'm done with part C. I'm going to move on to part D, and the rest of these are easy. To do part D, it says find the value of the length that leads to the maximum area. I'm going to use this formula, that the length equals negative 2w plus 1,000, and I'm going to plug 250 in for the length. So I'm going to go length equals negative 2. I'm going to plug 250 in for the width. So length equals negative 2 times 250 plus 1,000. That's going to give me the length equals negative 500 plus 1,000. And that's going to equal positive 500. You certainly can do that on your calculator. Just sometimes it's quicker for me to not use my calculator. So I'm going to say the length that I need to build is 500 meters. And then lastly, find the maximum area. Probably the easiest way to find the maximum area if you don't already know it, is to use the area equals length times width formula. And that's what I'm going to do to find the maximum area. I'm going to go area equals length times width. And for the length, I'm going to put 500 meters. I haven't been putting units in. Let me sneak them in here. And the width is 250 meters. And now I'm going to multiply these. In general, I'd have to use my calculator to multiply these, but I know it's going to be that 125,000, so I could have cheated and got the answer. Let me just do this on my calculator, though, real quickly. 500 times 250, and I get the 125,000 that my um, vertex already told me. And area units need to be square units. So for the answer to part E, the area that's going to be enclosed when we build this is 125,000 square meters. So there's multiple ways to get these answers. The um, answer to part C and E can be found graphically by just finding the vertex of the parabola that's from the, from the equation in part B. The x coordinate is the optimal width. The y coordinate is the optimal area, the maximum area that can be enclosed. Um, you're welcome on the test to do the problem graphically, or you can get the answer to part C using the formula and not even sketch a graph. If you do it using the formula, then you're going to have to use a formula approach to do parts D and E. If you do the problem using the graphing strategy, part C and part E get answered from the vertex. Part C is the x coordinate of the vertex. Part E is the y coordinate of the vertex. Part D you'll still have to do with a formula. All right, that's one problem we've got a bunch to do. So um, problem one is your um, first problem to do. It's exactly my problem. The only difference is instead of having 1,000 meters of fencing, you have 800 meters of fencing. So pause the video and give it a go. If you're not successful with number one, my problem four is exactly the same problem actually too much the same problem. So I'm going to do problem four here in a second just in case you need to see another one of these. Alright, so here's my problem four and I had to change my problem four 
because my problem four had the same number as problem two. So exactly the same question. If you laid my problem two on top of this problem, the, it's exactly the same, at least up, up to here. And I didn't write follow these steps to find the largest area. So it's exactly the same problem with a different number. That's generally what I do when I create test questions. When I write a test question, it will be the same question as one of the homework questions with a different number. So same structure here. Campground owner has 600 meters of fencing. He wants to enclose a rectangular field bordering a river. No fencing is needing, needed along the river. Let W be the width of the field. L be the length of the field. And same diagram is going to apply here. So here's my river. And this campground owner is going to build three sides of a fence. The sides that are perpendicular to the river I call widths for W and the side parallel to the river I call lengths. And I know that the one length plus the two width sides that need to be built needs to use up all 600 meters of fencing. Just like I did in problem two, I'm going to solve this for L. And my answer to part A is going to be the length of this field can be represented by negative 2W plus 600. This is probably the best answer for part A. When I go to do part B, this field that we're creating is a rectangle. And the area of any rectangle is length times width. So this rectangle is going to have an area of length times width. Just like I did in the last problem, I'm going to change the length to what it's equal to. So I'm going to change the length to minus 2w plus 600. And I still have this w after there. And I'm going to clear the parentheses by going minus 2w times w. That will give me minus 2w squared. And then I'll do 600 times w, which will give me plus 600w. This, again, is going to be the best answer for part B. They're all correct answers, but this is going to be the best answer because it's going to be the most useful. To do part C, I could do it graphically. I can graph this equation. Find the vertex of the parabola. The x-coordinate of the vertex is the width that gives the maximum area. The y-coordinate of the vertex is the maximum area. I like just doing algebra, so I'm going to find the value of w that leads to the maximum area by using the negative b over 2a formula. And for this function, the a is going to be negative 2. The b is going to be 600. So when I do negative b over 2a, I'm going to write negative 600 over 2 times negative 2. That's negative 600 over negative 4. And I'm pretty sure that's 150. I'm just going to divide 600 divided by 4 because I know the negatives are going to cancel. And I do get 150. So my answer to part C, the width that I'm looking for, is going to be 150. And the units are going to be meters. So I'm going to put M or write meters next to it. For part D, to find the value of L that gives the maximum area, I'm going to use the length formula. Length equals minus 2W plus 600. And I'm going to put the answer to part C. That was the answer to part C that I didn't say it was an answer. In for the W. So I'm going to get length equals minus 2 times 150 plus 600. That'll give me length equals minus 300 plus 600. And that gives me 300 for the length. So my answer is going to be the length, 300, and then I'll put meters or an M for meters on it. So you should put units. Widths and lengths don't have squares. They're just linear lengths, linear units. Areas, when I go to do part E, I need a square unit. When I go to find the area, probably the nicest formula to use to find the area of this is the length times the width. And I'm going to say the area equals to the length, which is 300 meters, times the width, which is 150 meters. I'm going to multiply the 300 times 150. 
I could. And I get 45,000 for the area. And when I go to write my answer, I'm going to say the area is 45,000 square meters. This is usually the problem that I ask from this section 3.6. The rest of the section from 5 on, those usually don't make it onto my test. So just in case you didn't get a chance to do number 3, um, there's number 3. I'm going to do number 6 before you. Um, I even show you number 5 because I don't think you could do number 5 without me doing number 6. So let me jump into number 6. And it's another fence problem. So we need a, a fence that's going to be built to enclose a rectangular area of 20,000 square feet. And for some reason, fencing material costs $2 for the two sides that face north and south, call these the length, and $4 for the other two sides, called, imagine I'll call those the width. Follow these steps to find the cost of the least expensive fence. So what I'm doing is I'm building another rectangle and I have to build all four sides as opposed to building three sides and I guess these are the sides that face north and south and I'm going to call these the lengths so this is going to be a length that's going to be a length this is going to be a width and that's going to be a width usually I make my lengths longer than my widths but yeah it is what it is uh, my drawing is a rectangle that fits perfectly at least uh, this information. I haven't snuck the cost in yet. I won't sneak the cost until I do part B. Part A wants me to find an equation for the length of the field. Well, I don't know the perimeter because I don't have the amount of fence predetermined, but I know the area that I want to enclose. And the area of this field is length times width. And so I'm going to say the length times the width equals the area of this field. And the area of this field is required to be 20,000 square feet. So when I go to two part A, I'm just going to take my diagram and I'm building a rectangle. I'm building two lengths and two widths. And the area has to be 20,000 square feet. So now I'm going to get length equals 20,000 over W. So that's going to be my answer to part A. For part B, to write an equation for the cost of the field, the lengths have a cost of $2 per foot, and the widths have a cost of four dollars per foot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add, I'm going to put the the cost of each of the sides next to the letters and I'm going to add them up. So the lengths are going to cost 2L for that side and 2L for that side. The widths are going to cost 4W for the top and 4W for the bottom. It's four times the length of each side. It's going to be the cost of each side. So my cost which I'll write C for, is going to be 4L plus 8W. This is a cost equation, but it's not going to be a very useful cost equation. Specifically, it's not useful because of the multiple variables. I need to take the L and change it to 2000 over W. So for an answer to part B, and a not a very nice answer, but the answer I'm going to live with is the cost is going to be 4 times 20,000 over W plus 8W. I can think of this as 4 over 1 times 20,000 over W. And if I wanted to clean this up a little bit, I'll go 4 times 20,000 and 1 times W. 4 times 20,000 is going to be 80,000. 1 times W is W. So I can write that first fraction as 80,000 over W, and I can leave this 8W afterwards. So the both of these are good answers for part B. When I go to do part B, I would probably think the best answer would be the cost is 80,000 over W 
plus 8w. Part C, I want to find the value of w that leads to the minimum cost. The graph of this is not a parabola, which means I can't use the negative b over 2a formula to get the answer to this question. And there isn't a slick formula that I can use to get the answer to this question. This is probably why I generally don't ask the question on a test. Um, in order to get the answer to the, find the value of w that gives the minimum cost, I, to do um, algebra, it's technically calculus, which we don't have. So what we're going to do is we're going to sketch a graph, and we're going to get the answer graphically. And when I sketch my graph, the x-axis is going to be the width, because this equation right here in the x position is the w, and the y-axis is going to represent the cost. And I'm trying to find the value of w that leads to the minimum cost. So when I go to graph this, I'm going to try to find a minimum point. And anytime I do a graph, I need to get a window. I wouldn't ask this on a test because the window is kind of a mess to come up with. But the, the um, x's are the widths. So I know the x min should be 0. I can't make a width less than 0. I'm not sure what the x max can be. Um, how to say this without being clever. Um, for the maximum width, I don't have a good idea of what it should be. Um, a way to get a reasonable x max is to take the square root of the area. And if I take the square root of 20,000, it will give me 141. I'm going to put 150 for the x max. So again, this isn't a problem that's going to make it onto the test, but it's, it's nice to be uh, exposed to it. So if you get it in calculus, then you can get up to this point, and then you can get the answer using calculus. So anyways, my, my x mins and x max represent the width. They should be between 0 and 150. My y mins and y max represents the cost. I know I can't have a cost less than 0, and I don't have a good idea how much this fence is going to cost. I'm going to do like $10,000 for just pulling a number out of my head. And if when I graph it, I can see the whole graph, then I'll leave this window. If I can't see the whole graph, then I'll start playing with the y max to start seeing the whole graph. So I'm going to graph this equation using this window, and I'll sketch it on here and describe what my answer is, how to get my answer. So y, whoops y equals clear, the function is 80,000 divided by x plus 8x. And then for my window, 0 to 150 on the x min and x max. I can't have a width less than 0. I took the square root of the 20,000 to get something close for the x max. y min 0, y max, I'm hoping the fence isn't going to cost more than $10,000, so I just picked a number that seemed like a big number for a cost of a fence. Now I'm going to hit and graph. And I, I think I can see the, the whole graph well enough. Um, maybe let me make the x max get out bigger, just so maybe we can see um, the actual minimum point. So this basically says that the costs are high when the widths are really small. And as the widths get bigger, the costs come down, they get to a low point, and then they start going back up as the widths go up. Somewhere in here is the lowest point of this graph. And the lowest point of this graph, its x coordinate is the width that um, gives the lowest cost and the y coordinate is the actual lowest cost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this point, which is a minimum point, and the x coordinate is going to be the width that gives the lowest cost, the y is going to be the lowest cost. I find minimum points just like I find maximum points. So I'm going to go second in calc. I'm going to go down to option three that says minimum. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to use my cursor. I'm going to trace way, way up into the high part of the graph, so I'm to the left of the low point. I'm going to hit enter. The word left bound is going to change to right bound after I hit enter. And then I'm going to trace way to the 
far right of the screen, which has got to be to the right of the lowest point, because as my graph starts going up here, I'm beyond the low point. I'm going to hit enter again, and the word right bound is going to turn to guess. And then I'm going to get as close as I can kind of to the lowest point, and I can't really tell where the low point is, but my calculator will figure it out for me. So I got close to the low point, and I'll hit enter, and it'll find the low point for me exactly. I'm going to round this to the point 100, 1600. The 100 is the width that gives the lowest cost. So my answer to part C is the width that gives the lowest cost is going to be 100 and it's going to be feet. So my answer is going to be the width that I need to build is 100 feet. And that would be the answer to part C. To find the value of L, I'm going to use that formula. I'm going to use the formula the length is 20,000 over W and I'm going to plug in 100 for W I'm going to cancel out two zeros, and this is going to give me the length. I think that comes out to 200 feet. So done with part C, done with part D. To find the minimum cost, I can just use this cost formula. Plug 200 in for that L, plug 100 in for that W, and I'll get the cost is 4 times the length, which is 4 times 200 plus 8 times the width, plus 8 times 100. This is going to be 800 plus 800. And this fence is going to cost 1600 bucks. I already kind of knew that because the y coordinate of the vertex is the cost that's associated with that width. So my answer to part C is the cost of this fence is going to be $1,600. So I wouldn't stress too much about this problem for now. If you're going to take brief calculus, there's a reasonable chance that your brief calculus teacher will give you the same problem. And when you get down to this part C, instead of getting the answer being via a graph, you're going to use calculus to get the answer. There's really no way to do the, the answer algebraically. There's no formula like there was for a parabola. So here's your problem five. Pause the video and give it a go. And if you're feeling up to it, give number seven a go as well, which is the same problem with just different numbers, essentially. If you're not ready to do five and seven, I'll do problem eight, which is the same problem with different numbers. So same, same exact setup here. Oh, almost the same exact setup, except for, well, let me read through it. A fence must be built in a large field to enclose a rectangular area of 10,000 square meters. One side of the area of the area is bounded by an existing fence and no fence is needed there. So let me try to draw this. So here's my existing fence. And I'm going to build right up to this fence. I mean the fence probably goes longer, but I'm going to I'm going to build three sides like that. <laughs> and it says no fence is needed where the existing fence was. Material for the fence cost $5 per meter for the two ends and $2 per meter for that side there. So these are going to cost $5 per meter. That's going to cost $2 per meter. I won't put the costs in until I do part B. So part A wants me to find an equation for the length of the field. Well, this is just a rectangle. I need to label the sides. I'm going to call the sides parallel. I mean perpendicular to the existing fence widths and the side parallel to the existing fence length. And I know the length times the width of this is going to give me the area, but the area needs to be 10,000 square meters, so I know that the length times the width has to be 10,000 square meters. And I'm going to divide both sides by W. And my answer to part A is going to be the length of this field is going to be 10,000 over W. Now I'm going to write an equation for the cost. I'm going to put cost next to these letters. Materials for the for the fence cost 5 meters for the two ends. These must be the two ends. So I'm going to say this is 5 bucks per meter. This is 5 bucks per meter. 
and $2 per meter for the side opposite the existing fence. So my cost is going to be this 5W plus that 5W plus that 2L. That's going to give me my cost as 10W plus 2L. Not good to have that many letters. I'm going to change the L to 10,000 over W. So my cost is going to be 10W plus 2 times 10,000 over W. And I think of that as 2 over 1 times 10,000 over W. And then I'm going to multiply the 2 in the 10,000 and the 1 in the W. And my answer to part B, my cost equation is going to be 10W plus 20,000 over W. Now I want to find the value of L that leads to the minimum cost. I'm going to graph the cost equation and make a window. My window, my x min is the, the smallest width possible. I'm going to put 0. My x max is the biggest width possible. I'm going to square root that 10,000 and then maybe make that a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to go second, second square root 10,000 and that's going to give me 100. Maybe, maybe make 125, maybe 150 for the x max, but at least in the hundreds is probably reasonable. For my y min, that's the cost. I know my cost can't be less than zero. And last time I picked 10,000 for a cost. I don't know if that's reasonable, but probably just a few thousand dollars. So I'm going to put 10,000. Hopefully I can see the entire graph well. So now I'm going to sketch a graph. And the shape's going to look the same. It's going to be something like this again. And my goal is going to be to find this point because that point, it's the lowest point, and its width is going to correspond to the lowest cost. So I'm going to graph the function 10w over 20,000w. So y equals 10x plus 20,000 over x, and then window. 0 to 125 on the x's, 0 to 10,000 on the y's, hit a graph, and I can see very clearly the graph goes down and comes back up. Now I'm going to find the minimum point by hitting my second button, my trace key, going down to option 3, hitting enter, and then the calculator will say left bound. I'm going to use my left arrow and get to this really kind of top of the swoosh here. So I'm getting my cursor up way, way above the low point. Then I'll hit enter. And then I'm going to trace way to the right of the screen, well beyond the um, low point, while a cal calculator says right bound. It's taking forever to get there. But now I'm to the part of the graph where it's going up. I'm going to hit enter. My calculator is going to say guess. I'm just going to go somewhere off into the middle of the screen and hit enter. And it's going to give me, ooh, what a horrible number. 44.72 for the, I'm going to round that to two decimals. So the width needs to be 44.72 and the units are in meters. So I'm going to say meters. And that's a surprising answer. Let me make sure I haven't um, messed up here. So I have 10x plus 20,000 over x. That feels good for the horrible answer. So I feel okay about this answer, but I don't like it so much. Um, move on to part B because D because I don't want to delve any further into this. I feel the answer is right. It's just a surprising answer. It told me to round to two decimals, so I did round to two decimals. Hopefully I did it properly because I didn't even pay attention. Let me real quickly make sure I did the rounding properly. So trace to the left of the low point. Trace to the right of the low point. then get close to the low point. 
44.721, so I did okay. The cost is going to be $894 and I probably 43 cents. Because I'm picking a rounded number here, it might not be exactly $894 and 43 cents when I go to do the cost. So for part D, to find the value of L, I'm going to use this formula and round to two decimals. I'm going to go L equals 10,000 over W, and in for W, I'm going to put 44.72. So I'm going to have L, so back to my main screen, and do 10,000 divided by 44.72 and round to two decimals. So I'm going to go 223.61 for my length. And the units are in meters, so I'm going to write meters down. And then the last part of this, the cost, I'm going to use the cost formula. Cost equals 10 times W. And for the W, I'm going to plug 44.72 plus 2 times L. And for the L, I'm going to plug the 223.61. And I'm going to do that on my calculator because it's hopeless to do by hand. So clear 10 times 44.72 plus 2 times 223.61. And I'll get the cost. I think that was exactly the cost, even rounded the same. So the cost for this is going to be $894.42. All right, so those last two problems were kind of, you know, the same, maybe not quite the same. Um, so let me flash up problem seven again, just in case you didn't get it. And... Um, That's just like the problem I did because we're only building three sides of a fence as opposed to four. Similarly, if just in case you didn't get five, let me flash it up again. This is where you're building four sides to a fence. So I'm going to pause the video and do a part two um, just because we're already, well, can, can I do that? It's only two problems. Let me just do it and not make a part two. Um, so let me just be bold here and make this video a little bit over an hour. So um, on questions 9, 10, 11, and 12, they're all four versions of the same question. I don't ask these on the test. Let me just do problem 10 and have you do number 9, and let's skip 11 and 12. I know I'm not going to test on these. I just want you to become familiar with them just in case you take a calculus class and you're asked to do these questions with calculus as opposed to with your graphing calculator with some algebra. So. As I read through problem 10, it says an open box with a square base is to be made from cutting a square piece of cardboard that's 12 inches on a side by cutting out a square x inches by x inches from each corner ugh, and turning up the sides. Sketch a diagram. I can't sketch for beans, so I'm going to draw a diagram. What I've done is I've made a square piece of paper here, and from this square piece of paper that I'm going to cut out from each corner, I'm assuming this is a piece of paper that's 12 inches by 12 inches because I'm starting with a cardboard piece of cardboard that's 12 inches square. And from that cardboard, I'm going to cut out on each of the corners the same cut, x by x cuts. So I have a fictitious piece of cardboard that started off 12 inches by 12 inches is what it starts off. And what I'm going to do, if I can find my scissors, what I'm going to do is do what it says. I'm going to cut square pieces of cardboard out from the corners. So from each corner, I'm going to just cut the, um, yeah. I'm going to cut the corner out. Such a bad idea to put this problem in the homework with my limited uh, abilities to do anything like this. Like cut on lines, cut squares, draw squares, none of which I can do. All right, so I had a break there in the video, which is probably a good thing. So what I've done is I've taken my piece of paper that started off theoretically 12 inches by 12 inches, and from each corner I cut a 12-inch square out, and now I'm going to make a box. I'm going to fold up each side best I can. 
and it's going to create an open box, a box without a top. So this is the um, box that is supposed to be made. And there's my sketch a diagram. So I'll say C model. And this won't be on the test, so we don't have to worry so much about this. But again, I want you to see this just in case you take a calculus class and they have you do this with um, they'll add, you know, they have this complicated problem and then we'll throw calculus into the mix, which will make it a little bit harder. So having seen it once would be a good thing. So now, I'm done with the diagram. Now I need to write an equation for a volume of a box. Well, I need to know the volume formula for a box. The volume formula for a box is length times width times height. And for this particular box, the height is, are these x's. This is an x, this height is x. The sides, they started off 12 inches. This, this, so this x right here I can call a height. And the other two numbers that, that I labeled, one of them's going to be a length and the other's going to be a width. Well, these sides started off at 12 inches, but from this side I took 2x cuts away, so its length now is 12 minus 2x because I took 2x's away from the 12. Similarly, this side started at 12 inches. I cut out x from each side, so its width is going to be 12 minus 2x as well. So this particular box, its height is our x, and its length and its width are 12 minus 2x each. So for my volume formula, I can say the volume is going to be 12 minus 2x, 2x for the length, 12 minus 2x for the width, and x for the height. I could certainly multiply this out. In a calculus class, if we were trying to do um, calculus with this equation, we would multiply it out. But I'm going to call this my answer to part B. If you feel the urge to multiply that out, multiply it out. Part C says graph the volume function using your graphing calculator and find the value of x that makes the volume largest. So when I go to sketch a graph of this, to the right of the equal sign is the x, which is the length of the cut. And to the right, or to the left of the equal sign is the V, which stands for the volume. I'm going to sketch a graph, and I'm going to try to find the highest point. The X coordinate of the highest point is going to be the length of the cut that gives the most volume. And all this wants me to do is find the value of X that gives the, makes the volume the largest. And I don't think X can be over 6 inches, because if I make a 6 inch cut, I've cut the piece completely in half. So for my window, I know my X cut has to be at least 0 inches. And since this starts off being 12 inches, I can't cut more than 6 inches off. Otherwise, if I make two 6-inch cuts, I'm going to use the whole, whole piece of paper or cardboard up. For the Ys, these are my volumes. I know the volume can't be less than 0. I don't have a good idea for what the volume could, how big it could get. When you're multiplying three numbers together, let's say each one of these is like 5. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125, or each one of these is 4. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. My guess is that the volume is not going to be more than 100, because these numbers are small numbers. You know, numbers like, well, they have, they have to add up to 12, each one of these sides. So like 6, how about like 5, 5, and 2? That wouldn't be that particularly big of a number. Again, these aren't on the test, so I'm just kind of maybe not giving as much detail as you'd like, but just just to get you exposed to the concept of sketching a diagram, creating an equation, and then the rest of what you're going to do if you take calculus won't involve graphing, it'll involve calculus. So let me graph this horrible function. So y equals clear parentheses 12 minus 2x and 12 minus 2x and x seems good. Make my window 0 to 6 on the x's because that's the length of the cut. I can't cut more than 6 inches from a 12 inch piece of cardboard. And then my volume, or the y's, can't be less than 0. And I guess I can't have a volume more than 100 cubic whatever inches here. So let me sketch a graph. I guess I could. My window didn't go quite high enough, so let me make my y's get a little bit bigger. And maybe I just make them up to 150, just a random guess here. 
I just need to see the top of this graph. And at 150, I can see the top of the graph. And all I'm trying to find is the x-coordinate that makes this peak. And that's the x-coordinate that gives the maximum volume. I'll do that by going second calc, going down to option 4 that says maximum. I'll trace to the left of the high point and hit enter. Then I'll trace to the right of the high point and hit enter. And then I'll get as close as I can to the high point and hit enter. And the value of x, I'm going to round that to 2. That makes this box have the most volume. We'll say a 2 inch cut would give a volume of 128 cubic inches. This question doesn't ask for what volume you'll get when you make that cut. The question is find the value of x that makes the maximum volume. That's that value of x, which is 2 inches. So my answer to part C, x equal to 2 inches will give the maximum volume. You could add, it will give a volume of 128 cubic inches if you care to, but you certainly don't have to. So I'm going to flash number 9 up for you to do. Hopefully you can mimic what I did um, to do that. If you really felt the urge, you could do number 11. If you laid problems 9 and 11 on top of each other, you'll find out they're exactly the same, except I change the word, the number 10 to 20. And similarly, if I was to do number 12, it's the same question. We're going to take a piece of cardboard and this or piece of metal that's 30 inch by 30 inch, cut squares out of it, and make an open box and go through the same process. So give number 9 a go. Um, don't really worry about um, 11. I, I won't do 12. This won't be on the test again. This is just, just to um, make it so that if you see this in another class, that you at least are familiar with the concept. So I'm going to stop the video here, and that's the end of the chapter other than the review.